Warning, this video contains language and subjective views not suitable for all viewers. Please exit the video if you cannot tolerate a viewpoint different from your own. Thank you and enjoy. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any Why comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. That part. Kevin told you he wouldn't go wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. It's all right. Well, another great comedian said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts and, <laughs> and is this something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for... for uh, I definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Is nine-year-old Oscar nominee ah! Wallace? Ah! Oh, he needs some milk. Wow! 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 I don't think anyone saw this one coming. So let me get this straight. Kevin Hart started out in Hollywood with conservative values, meaning he put boundaries on the roles and characters he portrays not to mislead his audience in a certain way, but then goes on SNL a year later, compromising his values for more opportunities, more fame, and more money. Here he is trying to justify compromising his conservative values to adopt more of liberal values in exchange for money and fame. We talked about this this theme going around in the black community about black comedians wearing dresses. <laughs> yeah. You you went on SNL uh -huh. and did the convention there. You caught some caught some flack for it. Do you feel like it's unfair that black comedians might have to answer for stuff that like Robin Harris doesn't have to answer for? Or? No, you know what? I was actually I was actually one of those comedians that said no, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I would wear a dress. And, and then when proposed with the opportunity of what I felt was funny, I thought, oh, it's funny. I'm gonna do it. Kevin Hart went from having boundaries on the dress to saying that if presented with the right opportunity, he will wear the dress. What does this sound like to you? The common denominator for Kevin Hart to abandon his conservative values for progressive liberal values would be to expand his reach to a wider audience for more money and more fame. Whether or not we are calling Kevin Hart's career decision a sellout to proto-black culture, this is usually the type of behavior displayed when someone is indeed selling their integrity out which will inspire others to follow your influence. What what was the motivation to do this? Was, was there a one thing or was there it was it a, was it a build up? Me being me being one of the only black guys in our entertainment space because there's a handful of us that get to look behind the curtain. Me being one of the only black guys in our entertainment space because there's a handful of us that get to look behind the curtain because there's a handful of us that get to look behind the curtain. You know, there's a curtain, there's another room and there's a curtain. And in that room is some shit. You're like, God damn, I didn't know y'all was fucking doing this back here. <laughs> I didn't know y'all was getting this type of money back here. Y'all been doing this for how long? This is how it happens. There's a, there's a room that you get in and the information and understanding that comes in it. The end, it's, it's unreal, the stuff that you start to discover. But it's a discovery. It's a discovery. You got to stumble upon this treasure of information and discovery. And if you don't, Maybe you're in the right environment and you hear some stuff and you can ask some questions, but nine times out of 10, it's not offered. It's a search and find. And when I was constantly in those situations and I find myself saying, so how, but why? Well, then what did you do? Right. Damn, after that, then what? What the fuck did you, what, how, how did that even work? And is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for? for uh, I'm if we make, you know, if we created a billion dollar company, you create a seven billion dollar We're giving company. you the infrastructure that we know works, but we're yes. embedding it to you at a young age so that it works earlier for you yes. and that you can succeed and surpass what yeah. we've done. Yeah, because they're building on. off, you know, had you had someone at 26 or earlier to say, 
you know, his camp heart production, the thing, his is how you do it. You don't want to need the back end. You want to create the content. You want to own the content. You want to take it here, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. If you had someone just to give you that roadmap, that roadmap has been given to people since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. We just was never um, privy uh, to it. Privy to it. Yeah. We never had access to yeah. that sort of information. I call it the I call wow. it the room with the door with the door behind it. You never get to that door. We yeah. we always got through the first door, yeah. and we were so excited about being in that room yeah. that we never looked at the next door, right? And is that something that you know you wouldn't do, you know, for? for uh, so Kevin Hart claims that you can't put moral boundaries on funny jokes. For Hollywood, that perspective and mind frame of thinking opens up more opportunities for you to climb up the celebrity popularity ladder. But you must be willing to exploit your morality in exchange for riches and fame. Is there a moral line drawn in entertainment? Or is Kevin Hart right that it's actually the traditional conservatives who lack the growth to see beyond a joke? Oh, Kwanzaa is, is relevant. Yeah, that's funny. She's small. I can do the whole thing. It'll be funny. Hey, what if you went in this way? And it was actually funny. It's funny. Yeah. So I, at the end of the day, I think funny is funny. You can't put rules and regulations on funny. I think funny is funny. You can't put rules and regulations on funny. You have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. You know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to been challenged, so, you know, I don't have to speak on them. Kevin told you he wasn't gonna wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision, duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay, it's all right. I was like, do you guys understand, like, do you understand how things change and how people change? You know that nothing stays the same. It ends up becoming a debate. People sometimes have a hard time processing, like, growth. Right. And it's on different tiers, right? Like, some friends can't understand why a friend chooses not to fuck with us when we do certain things. Right. Mm. They can't understand that that friend made the choice to grow mm. and no longer do said thing because that thing isn't good for me. Mm. Some friends go, you a bitch. Right. You're a pussy, and they, they, they give you the thing to make you feel bad about you're now new, right? right. Mm, okay. In life, or well, in any changes, there's a world of negativity that comes with that change sometimes. So mm. what I was trying to explain to people, I was like, yo, progression means that you change, but you change because there's value and reason why you change. Mm. The funny that I used to be may not be the funny that fits my now. My business mm. is what drives a certain thing for me. Mm. The business is what I need to grow because the star is already there. I want the business to catch up to the star. Mm. So ultimately, your idea of what funny is or the raw, edgy road of it, well, it doesn't bring me the same family endorsements that I needed to get mm. to this thing. It doesn't bring me the same perception that I need to make sure these family movies hit. It doesn't bring me this wheelhouse of world and wonder to check every box. So. You don't realize it, but Kevin Hart's done animation, Kevin Hart's done action comedy, mm. regular comedy, mm. drama, fucking mm. uh, author, mm. he's a radio host, mm. he's just a regular host. I mm. check every box. Right. The way you check those boxes is by having a high level of authenticity that's attached to the world that those things bring, right? If you don't do that, then why would you sit and listen to me? Why would you sit and watch? Why would you want to see? If you don't have authenticity attached to things, right. if you don't believe that I drank the shit, why would you buy it? If you don't believe that it's good, right. by me making you feel that it's good because you see me with it, then why would you support it? Right. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. And you know something, they'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. 
but I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources that we don't. But let us get on the line, boy boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So All of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, I said it, and this this sums it up well. Like you don't you don't entertain the circus. You watch it, right? And when a lion comes out and rides the bike, you don't think about it too hard. You just go, okay, that's crazy. A lion's riding the bike, and then you go home and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I don't feed into the stuff at all. At the end of the day, it's it's all entertainment to a certain degree. So you just hope that people can be smart enough and have a tremendous amount of logic to just go and possibly do research or fact check. And if they do, then great. If they don't, then two dose to that as well. Uh, I just don't have the time for it. There's too much going on. So. There was a recent controversy online, I know you don't spend all your time online, about uh, Kevin Hart mm -hmm. uh, wearing a dress in an SNL skit. And Dave Chappelle spoke about that as a comedian, black actors always, you know, being asked to wear dresses. Have you ran into that? And what do you think about that whole Illuminati theory that people could put out there about that? Well, you <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that softball question. Uh, it, it's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying, um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now <laughs> we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. So now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm -hmm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. We all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now, it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. I'm still not going to join, but I respect it a little. And then, I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And, what? Just, you've been off, yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was my way of yes, cueing you. Like it's open dialogue. Yeah. You want me to keep talking about it? By, by all means, this, we can keep talk about anything. But <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah. I just, I, I, just, <laughs> no, of course. Uh, all for tons, man. But I've I got to a place where I understood that the dollar that the dollar shouldn't shift my. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100 city tour. I'm not gonna have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? Clear, Jay, that's the only reason why Jay Z is on Twitter Spaces. You see Jay on on he's a, a smart man. He's on Twitter too. Yeah, he, that's the only time he's on Twitter. He's a smart like, man. He, what do you mean? He, it's the world. Out. He just told you. He listened to his last song. He's talking to you about the world of steak. So, yes. He's talking to you about the world of investment and cap tables. His mm. conversations change. He got some people that look down on him because his conversations have changed. Right. But his conversations have changed no. for the better, it's not for, for the, the worse. He's so, the best champagne in the world. So sometimes, listen. Sometimes you either understand that or right. you don't. I come from a space now where 
I understand that doors open and behind those doors are other doors. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that wants to keep opening up the doors. I'm going to be with the people that get them open. That's mm -hmm. it. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? People don't seem to understand that evolution. Number five? Am I on number five? Yeah, you go. You go. Right. Evolution okay. is authenticity. Like, as we evolve, that is your authentic self evolving Absolutely. as well. And people don't, don't ever want to understand that. Absolutely. Yes. I have no problem with... I have no problem with the world of growing because as you grow, that means that the people around you are growing as well. Right. So uh, I believe that your success is best seen through the success of others. Mm. So how many people around you successful. are successful? Mm -hmm. How many people around you have different tiers or different levels of success? Yeah. When there's a high number of that, then that's your win. Yeah, Kevin Hart purchased it, so he's now doing a uh, comedy view. That happened at the same time that they gave DC Young Fly uh, Hollywood Squares. Where? Yeah, because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers. But we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? And he now opening it up for, don't such and such open the gate? For, what do you mean there ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out here. Well, you I, I, everyone I've seen got a keeper. The guy that sits on top right now has taken advantage of all the money that I have. I've shot over 56 specials for the up and coming generation of comedy. Why? Because I'm trying to create opportunities for others. So rather than complaining yeah. about it, I'm fixing it. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I also take full responsibility for any and everything that I've done in the fucking business. Good or bad. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one You point. were you the guy. Yeah. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh, okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what? I got to fix me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to stand up for comedy. Mm -hmm. So when you say Tiffany Haddish doesn't deserve or isn't really a comedian and these other women have worked hard, which they have. I have to say. Have, have, you, ever been on, have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. So no. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like you can't get a young fan base with that. Like you gotta be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. Shouts out to Melanie Cam Camacho. Shouts out to Lou Nell. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Leslie Jones who are all underneath the umbrella of Cat Williams. Cat Williams, have you ever used your platform to fucking bring the people that were under you up? Mm. You haven't. So because you haven't, don't shit on those that now are. I've used my platform and I brought my guys and girls up. Mm. The brand of Captain Hart is a brand that's expanded so fucking far, whether you like me or not, my presence of comedy will forever be felt because mm. I'm a fucking boss. Mm. I sit on the top of it and the opportunities I'm giving are the ones that I'm creating. Mm. So take responsibility for what you did. You fuck you. Nobody else did. You don't hear Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, The Kings of Comedy, Seinfeld. You don't hear George Lopez, mm -hmm. Eddie Griffin. You don't hear fucking, uh, uh, who, who else can I go down the, the road of other comedians? Steve Martin, Martin Short. You don't hear Naeem. the guys that got on top mm -hmm. and that made it by doing what they love, complain about the people that are coming under them. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because they're happy with themselves. Mm. Don't blame everybody else for your shit. Don't shit on my sister Light because you're not happy with your shit. This shit is earned. It's not given. I don't give a fuck if you're a Tiffany Haddish fan or not. It's earned. Tiffany Haddish got years in the game. It's not an accident that Tiffany Haddish got an opportunity to star in a movie. It's not an accident that that character popped in the movie. Written or not written, a character has to pop it. And he even acknowledged the years that you put in before that. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. It's all right. At the Super Bowl, here you go, Scott. At any time, at any time, you can get straight bang on your name. At any time, sir. Go Cowboys. What's my, this is my last question. I know you want to be a billionaire. Has the Illuminati, Illuminati approached you about sacrificing anyone to make it happen? All the time. Okay. Yeah, according to the internet, I've been an Illuminati. Yeah. By the way, I've never, I still don't know what it is. Like what is it? Is it a is it a club? What is it? I don't. You're closer than me. I don't know yet. What is it? What is, do you know exactly? You don't know that none of us know. But if you want to sacrifice somebody, you can sacrifice your partner. This is what, so. What they say you're supposed to sacrifice? Sacrifice partner. What's the thing where they said people eating babies? What was that? Uh, was that, that was Pizza Gate, right? Pizza Gate. Okay. Yeah. Was, my wife actually beat me up, made me take her on a date, took her to a dinner party. 
I'm not a name dropper, but this joke doesn't make sense unless I drop the name. I went to Seinfeld's house for a dinner party. Some of the best food I've ever had. Food's fucking amazing, man. At the end of the dinner party, Seinfeld came walking out. He was like, nobody go anywhere. Me being one of the only black guys in our entertainment space, because there's a handful of us that get to look behind the curtain. Because there's a handful of us that get to look behind the curtain. I had access to yeah. that sort of information. I call it the I call wow. it the room with the door with the door behind it. You never yeah. get to that door. We yeah. we always got through the first door. Yeah. And we were so excited about being in that room yeah. that we never looked at the next door. Right. You guys are in for a treat tonight. We're gonna have some brick oven pizza. Everybody went crazy in the party. What? Oh my God! Brick oven pizza. What? <laughs> One lady was like, how many cheeses, Jerry? <laughs> Jerry was like, seven different cheeses, seven different cheeses. <laughs> people went crazy. By the way, all these people were white. These are all fucking white people. They start chanting, bop, 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 bop. The fuck is bop, man? <laughs> bop, bop, bop. What the fuck is bop? White woman leaned over the table. She was like, it's short for brick oven pizza. I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, okay, I get it. Seinfeld had some Italian men walk out. They had pizza like garb on. They start passing out the pizza saying Italian shit. This is what so what they say you're supposed to sacrifice. Sacrifice body. What's the thing when they said people eating babies? What was that? Uh, that was Pizza Gate, right? Pizza Gate, okay. Yeah. People were eating the fucking pizza going crazy. Oh my god, I taste the cheeses, Jerry. I taste the cheeses. They bought me my piece of pizza. I took a bite. I couldn't fucking believe it. Best pizza I've ever had in my life. Best fucking pizza I've ever had. Had some type of lettuce on it. I've never tasted this shit. Took my white baby's got some type of lettuce on it. Wait till you taste the lettuce. This white woman rule. She leaned over again. She was like, it's arugula. I said, what? It's arugula. Oh, shit. I took another bite. I got caught up. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, <laughs> What an amazing night. It's a fucking amazing night, start to finish, man. In the car, I was pissed. I was pissed, you know why I was pissed? Because I wanted what Seinfeld had. I wanted that fucking moment, man. Seinfeld was known as the brick oven pizza guy. He was known for something else outside of his fucking fame. I wanted that. What really pissed me off is that the same people that built Seinfeld's house built my house. Not once was I offered the option of getting a brick pizza oven at my house. <laughs> this was racism at the highest level. <laughs> Was in that too. You was in Pizza Gate? That's what they said. Oh, you wow, they wow, yeah, wow. Thought I was eating babies. You up there. Wow. They think you like. So what is that? So wow. Illuminati and Pizza Gate, not the same thing. No, nah, no, nah, I don't think it's the same. Uh, it might be the same elite circles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they eating babies for sure. That's what they say, they, yeah. Yeah, they eating babies. This clip right here is going to probably, they're going to put this up too and say, see? Absolutely. See, they're doing they doing it right in our on. face. How yeah. they put Especially that Especially with your hand, you got the hand, that's the hand sign right there. Is What is this? I don't know, I'm just saying. I was about to say fuck. So the restaurant is going to be a baby based Restaurant, so you're gonna eat babies. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? What is it? Hey, I forgot. Hi, guys. Uh, <clears throat> I'm um, my name is Roy, and uh, I um, and for the most evil invention in the world contest, I invented a, uh, a child molesting robot. Beg your pardon, what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll speak up. Uh, it's a robot that is designed to molest children. And uh, I call it uh, Robo Jumbo. Uh, you see, it's powered by solar rechargeable fuel cells and it costs pennies to manufacture. Uh, and it can theoretically uh, molest twice as many children as a human molester in, quite frankly, half the time. Um, so, uh, do I win the contest? Uh, seems like I win. Seems like I win. Oh my god! What's wrong? What's wrong? My most evil idea was a blizzard in July. Right. Well, I went in a slightly different direction with the assignment. You built a mechanical sex predator! Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's exactly, exactly right. This this guy gets it. You get it. Oh my god, no I don't. How, how do you even build a child molesting robot? Well, that's a, um, that's a great question. What you do is you start by building a regular robot, uh, then you molest it and hope that it continues to, uh, the cycle. Dear Lord Almighty. That's the most hideous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, well, thank you very much. You see, the shrink guy uh, uh, is with me all the way. Stop saying that! You know, I want to remind you guys that uh, in Webster's Dictionary, it defines evil as profoundly immoral. We know what evil means. Well, it doesn't seem like you do, because you built a, a freeze ray. This is what, so what they say you're supposed to sacrifice? Sacrifice body. What's the thing when they said people eating babies? What was that? 
Uh, that was Pizza Gate, right? Pizza Gate. Okay. Yeah. I, was- uh, I think now, knowing about the opportunities that that can be thrown at you, it's all about choice. You know, nobody makes you do anything. Right. Nobody says this is what you got to do. It's the only way that you're gonna do it. Nobody made Martin put on a dress in Big Mama's house. Nobody made Tyler Perry put on a dress as Medea. Nobody made Jamie Foxx put on a dress as Wanda. And nobody made Martin do it as as Shanene. You know, it was a choice. Uh, and on Saturday Night Live, you know, it was a choice that I made. So I think it's all about your your pick of what's funny to you and what you feel will be funny to others. And I will say that's the knowledge that I now have and understand. But from the outside looking in, you always go, oh, I ain't gonna do it. Ain't no way, uh, uh, why? Why I gotta do it? I ain't gonna compromise myself. For what? I am who I am. But then you're in a movie, and then it calls for a funny scene. Come on, I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. Like, you look said good, no to that. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. But at the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So you know, protecting my brand is is definitely a priority.